Hello, my name is Austin Saunders, and this is the Thermoforming Alternative Lab Assignment for ETM 2080 Industrial Plastics. Okay, so to begin, we have clear polystyrene. Uh, the product we were trying to thermoform here is a bowl. Uh, the material used for clear polystyrene is two uh, 0.04 polystyrene sheets. Uh, it's two because uh, the two different kinds of molds. So the top picture is uh, is a cavity mold, while the bottom picture is a plug mold. Uh, the mold material for both is fiberglass, and both molds were in good shape. Uh, machines and equipment used: uh, the mold, the oven, and the vacuum, which is a part of the oven, but I just included it as a separate piece. Uh, processing time uh, for the 0 0.04 thickness it has to be in the oven for 30 to 50 seconds at 375 degrees uh, pressures uh, it was it was mentioned in the video but we never really got a number so I added a place for it but I didn't have a value for it uh, method of measurements would be the timer on the oven and the thermometer that was reading the temperature of the part when pointed inside the oven. Um, as far as defects go, the sheet for the cavity mold uh, tore on the side because of the height of the mold, and uh, the plug mold just had a few wrinkles. Uh, now moving on to white polystyrene, uh, which is very similar process to the clear. Uh, one was cavity molded, one was plug molded. So again, you have two sheets of 0 0.04, so the same thickness, uh, same mold material, fiberglass, same same uh, mold condition, and then same equipment used. Uh, the only difference is the clear polystyrene was in the oven for 30 to 50 seconds while the processing time on the white polystyrene was 60 seconds. Uh, it's still at 375 degrees. Uh, there was, same with the last, there was no pressure, there was no pressure mentioned, but I still added a spot for it. Uh, method of measurement is the timer and the thermometer. Uh, and then the only part, the part defect for white polystyrene is on the plug mold, so the bottom picture, the edge that's closest to us or closest to you if you're facing your laptop screen uh it didn't seal properly so there was an air there was an air leak that's why it didn't really take shape so okay so now we have red polystyrene uh same as the last two products it's a bowl again uh however with the red polystyrene uh, it was one sheet of 0 0.06 polystyrene. So uh, this one was uh, 0 0.02 thicker. Um, however, it was the same mold, so made out of fiberglass. Uh, it was in good shape. And then same as the last two, uh, the mold, the oven, and the vacuum are the machines and equipment used. Uh, processing time here was two minutes. Uh, there wasn't, the timer wasn't set or, or anything, but what I could tell from the video and me trying to time it, it was two minutes from start to finish in the oven. Uh, the temperature wasn't adjusted from the last, from the uh, white polystyrene, so it was still at 375 degrees. Uh, no pressure was mentioned. Uh, the method of measurement here is eyes and looking to see when the plastic starts to uh, droop down a little bit to tell when it's hot. Um, the For part defects, it was just the cavity mold this time, not the plug mold, but you can, as you can see in the pictures, there's just a few wrinkles, nothing major. Uh, this one, you can see the corrugation on the inside, the pattern. Okay, and for our last product, we have green acrylic. Uh, so, similar to the last two, the product name is a bowl. 
uh, the material used this time was actually different than the previous three. So we used one uh, eighth inch thick acrylic sheet. Uh, we used the same mold though. Uh, in this case, it was a uh, plug mold. So, but it was still fiberglass. The mold was still in good shape. Um, the machines and equipment used is the same. Uh, the big difference is uh, with acrylic is the processing time. So, uh, the chart said to set the set the timer to 275 to 450 seconds, which is five minutes and 45 seconds around there. And then the temperature to 90% uh, power on the oven or approximately 340 degrees. Um, it didn't mention anything about pressures. Uh, again, uh, we use the same methods of measurement, the timer and the uh, thermometer. Uh, and then similar to the last couple parts, the only real defects on this one, um, with acrylic, it doesn't really draw the corrugated pattern on, on the inside as much at all. Uh, and there was a few wrinkles. Okay, so now that we've viewed all the products, here are three things I think you must do to ensure a good part. Uh, and the first of those being properly setting the height of the mold. So it's adjusted by those bolts on the bottom, but that seems to be something that uh, in the video that was having to be adjusted constantly. Uh, it even caused the defect on the first part where it had a little tear in the side from it being too high. Uh, so that's just something you want to get set right off the rip and uh, make sure it's the right height, but also make sure it isn't causing any defects or anything. The second thing you need to do is setting the oven to proper temperature and time, depending on the material and thickness. <clears throat> okay, so there's the time values on the bottom of the molds, which you don't really know how accurate those are, and then there's the charts. So you really, uh, in my opinion, I would go off what is based on the charts to get the best product. Uh, and then the last thing is be sure to turn on the vacuum with 10 seconds left on the timer to create a vacuum surge. Uh, that's just very important to get your part to take the shape of the mold. So, Okay, and last but not least, uh, this is after watching the video, this is how I think we could improve the process. Uh, starting with test run. A strict temperature and time test to ensure what works well with each material and thickness uh, just seems to be something that would be uh, very beneficial. Uh, not having to look on the bottom of old molds, not being sure how accurate that information is. Um, and even with the numbers that are provided on the chart, I mean, the, the oven's looks to be pretty old so maybe reevaluating those times maybe it needs longer to get up to that heat uh just figuring out what works best with each material and thickness um uh, i mean granted that'll take some time but i think it'll be worth it to get a more quality product uh procedures to implement uh use information from the test i just mentioned to uh like i said reevaluate the uh, uh, time and temperature chart uh, and as I mentioned with the oven aging maybe retrofitting with new controls and parts uh, that would get a better product uh, I'm sure retrofitting is very costly uh, I did a little bit of research and I found it to be very costly but uh, instead of buying a new machine retrofitting is only 30 to 40 percent of a new machine so I think it's a little bit more efficient, money efficient wise. Uh, what I saw wrong, the corrugated pattern was only clear on one item. Uh, and reading the bottom of the molds to get your uh, times and temps, I didn't think that was very effective, which is why I mentioned, uh, which brings me into how to move forward. Uh, update. 
uh, the temp and time charts and retrofit and update the oven. Uh, that's how I, in my opinion, that's how I think we should improve the process. And uh, that is all for this presentation.